RadioInfluence.com, podcasting redefined. This is the fabulous sports babe on Radio Influence. My friend Susan Waldman is going to come today. and We're taking care of business because I am the babe. How far back did you go with George when you decided to do this? Because you've been doing this for a long time now. Well, I've been. Well, it started in '87 when I first arrived there, and George didn't take me seriously because, and George had a unique relationship with the writers. Um, you know, when George was around, they all like followed him around like little puppy dogs, and if he wanted to talk, and he was always a presence. And George and I'd say, Mr. Steinbrenner, Mr. Steinbrenner, and I'd chase him down the hall because I didn't want to ask any questions around the writers. Right. So I would chase him down to the elevator, and um, he'd turn around. When he got in, you weren't allowed to get in the elevator if George was in it. <laughs> and I would run down, and George would get into the elevator, and he'd say, what do you want, as the door was closing. And I'd run up the ramps, and if I could get to the elevator door before he got to the office, he'd talk to me. That's how this started. And I always thought that maybe he waited because he thought it was kind of interesting that some girl was running around and trying to beat all these guys. Um, my relationship with George, as when he started noticing me, was that winter, 88, um, George always took the beat writers to lunch in Christmas, at Christmas, and I was not invited. And I remember calling the then um, PR director, Harvey Green, and, and saying, well, I, I'm a beat reporter. And he said, no, you're not a writer and you're not a man. And I said, well, I understand that, but I'm, I'm a beat reporter. I'm there every single day, and I break stories, and I should go. And Harvey said, no, Mr. Steinbrenner doesn't want that. So what I did was I um, wrote a letter and I got the, the sales department to tell me how much my five-minute spot sold for at 5 o'clock and how many people listened to my 505 Yankee report. And what I did was I Xeroxed it and I Federal Express the letter and it turned out that not only did my Yankee report sell for a lot of money, uh, more people listened to me at 5.05 talk about the Yankees, then read every single paper in the tri-state area. <laughs> and then I said, and by the way, I'm coming down to Tampa, and I demand an interview. I'm taking my tape recorder, and I will be there. I didn't tell them I was going to a spa in, the, which yeah. in, in Tampa. Right. Um, and when I got there, my phone, the lighting on my phone hotel was, um, was lit up, and it was George's secretary who said, uh, um, Susan, Mr. Steinbrenner will see you Monday morning at 9 o'clock. And by the way, I have Xeroxed your letter, and I have sent it to every woman in this building. And you're going to get some reception when you walk in this door. Good. So I walked in, and um, George said, what do you want, Waldman? Now let me tell you what I think. And I said, okay. And he said, um, I don't like women in the military. I don't like women in sports. I don't like women policemen. I don't like women firemen. I like women to look pretty and spend my money. And I said, okay, I can do that. Now, I have an interview here. You promised me an interview. Here we go. And if you, if you think that um, that's all that women can do, I'm really sorry for you. And I took out my tape recorder, and that's how our friendship, mentorship started, because I never backed down from him. I mean, he would yell at me, and I would yell back. Uh, no cell phones in those days, right? So you had mm -hmm. to call him in the office. And you had to call him different places. And about a year later, he had said to me, Waldman, this is 1988, he said, um, Waldman, one of these days, I'm going to make a statement about women in sports. You're it, and I hope you can take it. Um, that was about a year before I had death threats at the stadium, and people tried to fire me, and the people at WFAN were taking my interviews and messing with them so that I sounded like an idiot. Um, that was long after people didn't talk to me in the press box for a solid year. That was after uh, men would send me used condoms in the mail, people would spit <laughs> at me, players would spit at me. Um, yeah, I had a great time. But George, that's what George meant when he said, you're it, and I hope you can take it. Follow her on Twitter at Real Sports Babe and subscribe to the show on iTunes. This is the Fabulous Sports Babe on Radio Influence.